Kukai Star Rail has been a tremendous success. And of course, it was a lot from the lessons learned from the previous Hoyer vs. games. On the other hand, some players believe that Star Rail is the favorite child of Hoyer vs. And like my mother used to say, there is nothing better than comparing your two children and seeing who's the best. So let's put down both games side by side until the 2.0 version to understand how each one of them has evolved and who's the best. To be fair, while comparing each of them, I will examine three important points for any gacha game. Banner and characters, content and events, and finally, pools and rewards. But before that, let's compare the development of the games and how they got to be born. Genshin was developed using the Unity engine, with a team of 400 to 700 people over 4 years of development until the release of its version 1.0, costing a total of $100 million. On the other side, Honkai Star Rail had a team of approximately 500 people also taking 4 years for its development until the version 1.0, costing approximately $90 million. Both games started their version 1.0 with the exactly same number of characters, 21, not counting the two elements that our MCs can use. If there is any reason for this number, it is not clear, and if you know, leave it in the comments. In Genshin we had Amber, Kea, Lisa, Barbara, Noel, Bennett, Razor, Beidou, Fischl, Shanling, Shantil, Changyun, Ningguang, Sucrose, Venti, Klee, Zhang, Diluc, Keqing, Mona, and Chichi. While in Honkai Star Rail we had Arlan, Asta, Beilu, Ronya, Clara, Dahan, Gepo, Herta, Himiko, Hook, March 7, Natasha, Pella, Chintue, Sampo, Zilla, Servo, Sushan, Tingyun, Wout, and Yanting. And after that, both games started with their first partners. In version 1.0 of Genshin, we had Venti and Pli as our first 5 star units, and in Honkai Star Rail, we got Zilla and Jinhua. Both games got a solid start, but a question about second banner. And this is where the competition starts to heat up. For version 1.1, Genshin got Chute and Diana in the first banner, and Zhongli and Xinyan in the second banner, while Honkai Star Rail only had Silver Wolf as its new character in the first banner. Although it was a tremendous success, not having a 4 star makes a difference, while Locha and Yukong were added to the second banner. In the version 1.2, Genshin has the addition of Albedo and Ganyu, and in Honkai Star Rail we have Blade and Kafka. For version 1.3, things start to change for Honkai Star Rail. Genshin went out of the standard, having 3 banners containing Xiao, Kichin, and Hu Tao. However, Kichin had already been released since version 1.3. 1.0, just never had her banner. In Honkai Star Rail, we had the addition of Imbibito Lune and Fushuan, as well as a new 4-star Lynx. In my opinion, two extremely strong banners, although Kafka is way more popular. Version 1.4 is much weaker for Genshin, which has its first reruns of Venti and Chute, with only the addition of a new 4-star called Rosaria. Honkai Star Rail also has the introduction of reruns, with Zilla returning to the banners, but with the addition of two new 5-stars, Topaz and Jin Yu. And Jin Yu has become one of the most popular DPS characters so far. For 1.5, Genshin has the rerun of Zhang Li and the addition of Yang Fei and Yula. For Honkai Star Rail, we have the rerun of Silver Wolf, but also the addition of Hanya, Ho Ho, and Argenti. And finally, for 1.6, Genshin has the addition of Kazuha, only Kazuha. While Honkai Star Rail has the release of Dr. Ratio, Ran Mei, and Xiu Yi, with the main difference being that Dr. Ratio is a strong 5 star character who was also offered for free for all players. Who do you think won this round? Leave it in the comments as the next one is about to begin. Like every Hoyerverse game, the content is similar when looking at quests and missions, but extremely different from a gameplay perspective. Given that Honkai Star Rail is a turn based battle game, although there is an exploration aspect, it is far inferior when compared to Genshin, which has an open world and is much more explorable. This also adds extra complexity to the development of Genshin. In version 1.0, Honkai Star Rail is started with three territories Hoth the Space Station, Bellabog, and Shenzhou. There are four Trailblaze arcs, 13 companion missions and 42 adventure missions. Genshin has two main areas, Moonstart and Liyue, but also two orcs, the prologue and chapter 1. Also, it has 11 companion quests and 58 world quests. In mechanics, both games are very similar. They both have domains and spiral abysses. The main difference is that Honkai Star Rail has the simulated universe, which is a roguelike game format that offers a lot of replayability. In events, both games offered almost the same things, 
levels. All of them will focus on introducing the players to the game, without a storyline, and many of them are permanent events, like receiving Shanlin after completing the third floor of the Spiral Abyss. The main difference is the login event. While Honkai Star Rail offer 10 pools for access in 10 days, Genshin offered 300 Primo Gems, which is around 1.8 pools. After the release, both games started evolving rapidly. In 1.1, Genshin added another quest to the main story quest, two new companion quests, eight world quests, and four events, two of them with their own storyline, and also a new system, the City Reputation, which added different rewards. In Honkai Star Rail, there is still no continuation to the main story quest, however, we got four new companion missions added, along with seven new events, three of them having their own storyline, and a new area, Bellabog Museum of History and Culture. I remember that this was quite an empty patch, and players were eager for more content. In 1.2, Genshin adds a completely new area, equivalent to a whole world in Honkai Star Rail, which is the Dragon's Spine. Additionally, there is two new companion quests, eight world quests, and four events. One of the events is the appearance of Abedo, and unfortunately, it was time-limited and not accessible nowadays. In Honkai Star Rail, we have the continuation of the main story quest, two companion missions, seven adventure missions, and two new areas, the Alchemy Commission and the Scale Gorge Waterscape. Also, among the systems, a completely new forward on Hall is added, specifically to Shenzhou, which will be equivalent to adding a new Spiral Abyss, and a new world is added to the simulated universe. To top it off, there are six events, and two of them having their own new mechanics. In 1.3, Honkai Star Rail completes the main story quest arc in Shenzhou, adds four new companion missions and one adventure mission. In its systems, there is a new extension to the simulated universe called Swarm Disaster, expanding a lot of this content. And finally, there are five new events, with one of them having its own storyline and becoming a permanent part of the game. In Genshin, 1.3 has two new companion quests, a new world quest, and this patch is heavily focused on its events, with six in total. But the main one is the Lantern Rite, which focuses on Shao's storyline, but unfortunately it's not permanent, and it would be a great improvement. Right, Hoyoverse? In patch 1.4, Genshin finally reached the end of its main story quest arc, but also adds four new companion missions and six events, with only one of them having a storyline. In Honkai Star Rail, there are five events, with one of them connected to the main story quest, while still not starting a new arc. The Ethereum Wars adds an event with the mechanic similar to Pokemon Battles. Due to this event, two new locations were also added, the Old Weapon Testing Grounds and Pillars of Creation. Finally, there is also the addition of a new companion mission. For patches 1.5 and 1.6, Honkai Star Rails follows the same formula, adding continuances that connects to the main story quest for our permanent events in the game. In 1.5, we got the addition of six events and also a new location, the Fike's Throw Garden. Also, a new world for the simulated universe and a new companion mission. While 1.6, there are six events, a new version of the simulated universe, the Golden Gears, and a completely new endgame called Pure Fiction and an extension to the Forgotten Hall, adding two new stages. For Genshin, in 1.5, there is the addition of a new mechanic, the housing system, two new companion missions, and three world quests. In 1.6, there is a prologue for 2.0, which starts to take us to Inazuma. There is also five events, one of them being the Midsummer Isle Adventure, which has become quite iconic. Woo! The second round is complete. Let's go to the third and final. In the last round, let's take a look at the pools and rewards offered in each game. And to be clear, we are talking about free to play only. In version 1.0 of Genshin, there were almost 13,000 Primo Gems, plus 8,000 obtainable through events, spiral bears, and other mechanics. This gives approximately 131 pools, or very close to that. In addition, in events, it was possible to obtain 4 4 star units. For Honkai Star Rail, there was a total of 19,605 Stellar Jades, or 122 pools, plus 35 pools offered in events. In addition, it was possible to obtain 3 4 star units. In version 1.1, Genshin offered 9,900 Primo Gems, or 61 pools, and 2 4 star units. In Honkai Star Rail, we had 7,780 Stellar Jades equivalent to 48 pools, with an additional 31 pools from events and other mechanics. In version 1.2, 8,835 Primo Gems or 55 pools were available in Genshin, while in Honkai Star Rail, we had 10,830 Stellar Jades, equivalent to 67 pools, and an additional 31 pools without using Stellar Jades were available. In version 1.3 of Genshin, we had 12,414 Primo Gems or 78 pools, and another 4-star unit Unit available, while in Honkai Star Rail, they had available 10,290 Stellar Jades, equivalent to 64 pools, and then another 41 pools 
without using Stellar Jades were also available. In version 1.4, Genshin had a total of 10,445 Primo Gems or 68 pools, while Honkai Star Rail had 9,265 Stellar Jades and an additional 30 pools without using Jades, giving a total of 87 pools. In version 1.5, Genshin offered 12,560 Primo Gems or 78 pools and another 4 star unit, while Honkai Star Rail offered 9,710 Stellar Jades and an additional 31 pools without Jades, giving a total of 91 pools. Finally, in version 1.6, 10,480 Primo Gems, equivalent to 65 pools, while Honkai Star Rail offered 10,390 Stellar Jades and an additional 41 pools without Jades, in total 105 pools. In addition, Honkai Star Rail offered a free 5 star unit. Who's better up to patch 2.0? Genshin, Honkai yeah. Sareo, leave your comments and as always, subscribe. It's that time again to get busy yeah. with it. Best go find your friends and get jiggy with it. Copy lighting the flames to get the city lit a little bit. Ain't no